All right, uh, let's get rolling. Our first speaker is the current vice president for programs at American Atheists, where she helps develop campaigns for activists and affiliates, manages national programs, and coordinates the national convention. She has also served on the board of Humanists International since 2020. Welcome to the stage, Debbie Goddard! Okay, does, whoa, that's very different. Hi. How are you? <laughs> it's, it's weird now. So I'm very excited. <laughs> it's weird to hear myself. I'm very excited to be here um, and honored and privileged. And it's weird, because I forget how to people. But uh, yeah, as mentioned, I'm at American Atheists and, and a coordinator for a national convention. And there was so busy running around trying to make sure that things came together, considering we hadn't done one in three years. And that one that we did, I'd only been on staff for a couple months. So I was like, I don't remember how to do these new things. Um, <laughs> it's been so long since we've done them. There were a lot of last minute changes that we had to make to take into account all these COVID effects. And uh, just getting through it meant that I didn't have to really think about it. And this is the first time I'm getting to speak somewhere I think, well, no, your conference, a month ago. Uh, <laughs> getting to speak, uh, <laughs> it's been a while to, to speak regularly and it's been a while with Skepticon. The first Skepticon I got to attend was Skepticon 3, which was a long time ago. We were all younger then. <laughs> so how many of you, I wanted to start actually with a couple of audience questions before I get into this meet, and I'll tailor what I say, like a choose your own adventure, based on the feedback that I get. So, for how many of you is this your first Skepticon? So like, Who's good with percentages and estimates? All right, so how many of you is this your first, in comparison, in-person Skepticon? So a handful of people in this room of some size that I can't estimate right now, that someone else can estimate if they want. <laughs> how many of you, including all the newts, have joined the atheist secular community or started being involved in something like the atheist secular community within the last three years? No one, you're all old heads. No, no, okay. How about 10 years ago or more? Wow. Okay, so, <laughs> a lot. How many of you are involved in local secular community groups? All right, good, cool, can't estimate. How many of you who have been involved for some length, let me tell the story and then you can say if this, if this meets, if this describes you. You were more involved in the secular community and you dropped out or reduced your involvement significantly because of the troubles. <laughs> <laughs> You knew what I was talking about. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, how many of you are members of national secular organizations like American Atheist Freedom from Religion Foundation, Center for Inquiry, American Human Association? All right. Cool. It's like, what, half? How many of you attended the American Atheist Convention in Atlanta? Woo! <laughs> Thank you, three people. <laughs> no. It's like, 
<laughs> it's like five people. And how many of you did the uh, American Humanist Association online conference? I'm curious of you. All right, few numbers. Cool. How many of you, this last one I promise, how many of you are plugged in, in the last year, you would say that you've watched with some regularity or consumed atheist YouTube videos, podcasts, TikToks? Okay. That's like what, a little more than half. Let me yeah, tell the story and then yeah, you can maybe. say if this, okay. if this meets, good to know, if this describes you. You were more involved in the secular community and you dropped out <laughs> or reduced your involvement significantly because of the troubles. Going well, so. <laughs> <laughs> nope. You knew what I was talking about. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> you got it. Okay. <laughs> so, Lauren told me with this and, uh, that the theme was. How many of you are members reunion. of national secular organizations? <laughs> yeah. So that's cool because so many of you are faces, familiar faces, have seen you before. All right. I was like, cool. but I don't, like, what, I don't, family, how many of you attended the American Atheist Convention? I don't know what story to tell to connect with people that will relate to my life that will reflect <laughs> Thank you, three on people. Well. No. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like five hey, people. Hey, so. And how many of you did the uh, American Atheist so Association So I'm shifting, I'm emerging conference. a little bit with uh, the idea of finding a cool. home and finding How many of you, this last one I promise, how many of you are, Plugged in I realized in the last um, year, and I actually told you the would story say that you've watched. Recently. I was asked a few years ago by a, a volunteer at the Center for Inquiry when I worked there. YouTube videos. Um, he was just podcasts, trying to get to know more about me. We were, he was new, TikToks. and he said, "Do you have a family?" And I said, "Yeah, I live with okay. my sister and my niece." Like, well, and he's like, more than half. "Let me yeah, tell the story, and then yeah, you can say." So you don't okay, have a family, and I was like, "What? I live with my sister and my niece." I mean, were more involved in the secular community, and you dropped out. <laughs> what do you mean? And he was like, "Oh, well, you know, because of I'm married, but my wife and I didn't. We decided not to have kids." No, you knew what I was talking. Okay. Oh, is that what you mean? Got it. Like okay. when someone says, we're so, going to start a family, because we're going to have a family, and we're you are members of the National Secular Organization. So I was just yeah. like, yeah, I live so with cool. relations, relations you literally. literally. So yes, <laughs> I do. I do have a family. I live right. with them. I was it's like, a very close like, relationship. I don't have family. But yeah, I was How confused about that. And my extended American family. I don't have a story to tell to connect with people in my life that will reflect on Thank you, three people. It's like, so. It's like, hey, so. And how many of you did the American Association I'm just emerging a little bit with the idea of finding that cool. And find How many of you, this last one I promise. No, she might watch this. Are Plugged in I realized in the last um, year, past tense, and I actually told you would say that you've watched. Um, I was asked a few years ago by a, a they moved in with me when I was living in Buffalo, New York. I worked at the Center for Inquiry. He was just trying to get to know more about me. He was new. He was. Do you have a family? At the time, she. Yeah, I live with my sister and my niece. Benefit from additional family support. Let me tell the story and then you can say. Okay. You don't have a family. Good to know. I live with my sister and my niece. You were more involved in the secular community, and you dropped out. What do you mean? And he's like, oh, well, you know, but because of we were married by 575 for 30 bedrooms. You know, you knew what I was talking about. Okay. Oh, okay. is that what you mean? You got it. The market wasn't really hot. Like okay. when someone says, we're going to start a family. Because we're going to start a family. And how you are members of the National Secular Organization. So I was just like, yeah, I live with cool. What's the way you literally? So yes, I do. I do have a family. I live with them. I was like, I realized I don't have family. But yeah, I was confused about that. And my extended family. I don't have a story to tell to connect with you. Thank you, three people. Hey, so and how many of you did the so uh, I'm just I'm emerging a little bit with, with the, the idea of talking about that direction cool. they wanted to develop. And find how many most of my skills and interests were? No, she might want to already develop. I realized last year, and you would say that you've watched. I was asked a few years ago by so they moved in with me when I was living in Buffalo, New York. I worked at the same time. I've been there for ten years. Do you have family? At the time, she yeah, I had been could benefit from additional like family support. support. Let me yeah, tell the story and then single mom. Okay, I don't have a family. Daughter, I was like, I live with my sister and my niece. We were more involved in the family. Family. You know, we didn't all agree with family. Family. each other internally. Family. There were always family. struggles, family. but we had a lot of respect for each other. And we were like, oh, well, but I'm married, but I'm not a family. You knew what I was talking about. Oh, 
Like, is that what you mean? <laughs> <laughs> the market wasn't really hopping. Like, when like, someone says, no, so 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 how many of you are members of the National Secular Organization? Yeah, I live with Russell and Asian literally. So, yes, I do. I do have a family. I live with them. I was like, I realized I don't but yeah, I was confused about that. I've been there for 10 years. I don't know what story to tell. Thank you, three people. It's like, so. <laughs> so so people like, hey, so <laughs> how many of you did the so uh, so I'm just I'm emerging in the world. I'm just the idea of the I'm trying to learn how many of you are skills and interests were. No, she might want to be hard to develop. I realized last year, and you would say that you've watched me. I was asked a few years ago by a moved in with me when I was living in New York. I was 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 in New York. <laughs> but I figure, like, what is my next stage? I've been here for so long. Okay, I have a family. Like, it's what? I live with my wife. You know, I'm not sure. <laughs> We're more involved. Think of myself. You know, we didn't all agree with each other. So we had a lot of respect. And we were like, oh, I don't even know. But I don't know. 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 You know what I was talking about. Is that what you mean? The market wasn't really popular. Like, when someone says, no, it's a family. Because I'm a family. How many of you are members? First of all, it's like, yeah, I live with cool. Russell and Asian people, literally. So, yes, most of us. I do. I do have a family. Yeah. I live with them. I was like, I realized. I've been there. But, yeah, I was just confused about that. I've been there for 10 years. I don't know. In 2018. Thank you, three people. So, people are going to say, how many of you did the shift from emerging in the world? I've been in the world. 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 Uh, uh, no, she might want to uh, uh, I realized, um, and I got hired at the end of the year. I was asked a few years ago by a student who was living in New York. I was trying to get a little bit of a moment where I was in New York. At the time, she had to be able to do this. But I figured, like, what is my next stage? I've been here for so long. 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 I'm not sure. We're more involved. We didn't all agree with each other. We're not sure. We're not sure. We have a lot of respect for each other. I don't even know. But I'm going to raise one of my friends in my life. I'm going to raise one of my friends in my life. You know what I was talking about. Oh, is that what you mean? Like, when someone says, no, it's a family. Because we're more I know others had a response. Yeah, I live with close relations with you, literally. So, yes, I do. I do have a family. I live with them. I realized I've been there for a long time. But, yeah, I was confused about that. I've been there for 10 years. I've been in 2018. Thank you, three people. Hey, so, how many of you did the show? So, I'm just emerging in the world. Yeah, I realized, and I got hired at the end of the year, and I was asked a few years ago by a student who was living in New York, while I was in New York, trying to be in my business, and I was in New York, so I figured, like, what is my next stage? I've been here for so long. 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 I've been here for I know others had a response. So, yes, so, like, yeah, I live with the best relations with the So, yes, I do. I do have a family. I live with them. I realize I've been there for a long time. But, yeah, I was just confused about that. I've been there for 10 years. In 2018. Thank you, three people. Hey, so, how many of you did the show? So, I'm just emerging in the world. I'm just emerging in the world. Yeah, I'm going to go to the next one. 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 I'm going to go to
And I, I didn't, I haven't been able to get out as much as I thought I would. You know, I'm from Philly. I left in 2006. I miss it, but there's also a pandemic. So it's not like I'm hitting all the bars. It's not like I'm going to the places with all the people. Things haven't looked exactly like in my brain I, I wanted them to look, but I'm still where I want to be, and I'm able to bike and walk places that I want to visit. Also, neighbors have changed. My favorite bars are gone, most of them, except for two. I haven't gone to them because I don't want to be around people. Um, <laughs> some of the demographics have shifted. I was like, at some point, like, who's the mayor now? I think it's, is it still Kenny? I don't even know. And I have to refigure out a lot of the things. But I realized when I was driving around the other day back from a Wawa that, um, <laughs> that there were a lot of things I just didn't need to think about that I understood. One thing that surprised me in New Jersey was how many like residential intersections had no stop signs. When I was like, how? <laughs> Someone should have a stop sign at this T intersection. And so I was always cautious in weird ways because I knew that it worked differently than I expected or was used to. And in Philly, everything's got stop signs. It's all four-way stops because that's just, there's intersections everywhere. It's, it's grid. And I was driving and I was like, I don't even have to worry about this. I don't even have to think about this. I just know how to be in this space. Like in some sense, even though I'm living in a different neighborhood than I've ever lived in and there are things that are, that are different, like there are certainly pieces here that feel like, like I'm home and this is the kind of space I belong in. I sort of hate to say that because I feel like I've given up on other places, I haven't. It's just really nice. <laughs> I want to appreciate for a second how nice it is to have the easy parts when I'm like, ah, I know how to be here. Ah, I know how the drivers work on the highways. Ah, I understand these intersections. Like it feels, feels like home. It will feel more like home when I unpack things in my living room, but still, there's strong benefits to the situation I'm in right now for how things feel. Ah. I know where to park when I want to go to Center City. Like, I just know how to figure out free parking. I don't have to be like, oh, where am I going to put my car? I'm like, I know where to put my car. <laughs> I know how to, how to work this out. So I want to draw a couple parallels with uh, our secular atheist community. And I'm going to be saying atheist as a shorthand. I feel like I'm contractually obligated to because I work at American Atheists now. <laughs> So it's an atheist community, but secular, skeptic, our overlapping, free thought, everything community. Um, and I'm going to start by drawing a small distinction between community and mo oh, shoot. community and movement. <laughs> community is so broad. Movement, I like to use more specifically when I'm talking about, or when we're talking about, the things that we're trying to accomplish. And I think one of the big changes that we've seen in the last, well, forever, but over 15 years building into the last 10, into the last five, we've just seen this, is a lot of evolution, development, growth, maturation of our secular atheist, et cetera, atheist community and movement. The movement part, some have said there, it's, there have been splits there's been division. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's clear. And that's because we have different goals, you guys. Like, yes, we start when there are fewer of us and when like 
social media became really a thing, we were an identity-based community. We're like, I'm an atheist, you're an atheist, whoa! And for most, like, that, was, that was it. That was all we really needed to be involved. We found other atheists. There were a lot of similarities, you know, things in common, experiences people had, interests, science, what, things like that. And as things went on, you know, people made different community forums, conferences, there's, yeah, organization work, but people did realize uh, that they had different goals as atheists, that we wanted to accomplish different things. And some it was just interest areas, like the skeptics versus the atheists or whatnot, right? And then some it was like honest to goodness, like policy, culture, social positions that we had, some which were in strong conflict with each other. I don't want to say past, some which are in strong conflict with each other. If you're interested in seeing change happen, and some people over here want to fight against you and see a completely different set of changes, then you are, I mean, like, you should be doing work in different spaces. So sure, yeah, good, you know, that, that's what it looks like when we grow large enough where we can sustain different avenues of work. That's, that's, that's some of the difference, I think, in movement. And some atheists have left the community spaces so that they can focus on other, this is being streamed and recorded, other things. <laughs> <sighs> and some atheists who I prefer to spend time with have also left our community spaces because of the challenges and difficulties or because they wanted to spend time on the other things. After Trump was elected in 2016, some of the organizers that I'd worked with most in secularism were like, I live in Ohio, I need to work on abortion now. My atheist group is not doing that. I'm, goodbye atheist group, hello NARAL. Like that kind of thing. And you're like, I know who you're talking about. But that's one example. <laughs> One example of just, you know, things, I need to work on this thing. I don't see the community that I'm a part of doing that. I'm going to do it over there. I've been thinking about that myself with the move to Philly. The active, like, I think it's a skeptics in the pub group. And the free thought. There were several groups that are meeting. One is specifically, exclu um, explicitly, non-activist, and I just moved to Pennsylvania where we have a Christian nationalist running for governor, where we have John Fetterman versus Dr. Oz in the Senate. If I care about our Supreme Court, if I care about these races, I might need to work on this. American Atheist does not endorse any candidates' parties. <clears throat> I'm just saying the things I'm thinking about <laughs> when it comes to activism and living my values, right? Like, I don't think the activism I need to do in the next four months is atheist-related activism. I don't think the community I should be spending time in as a new resident investing in is going to be atheist community stuff because I don't see those groups doing these things that need to be done and there's some urgency to the doing of them. And that, I saw that with people I liked in 2016. I saw some who were group leaders saying, I want my group to do this. They're not going to do it. I've tried to get them to do this. I need to go do it over there. I can't spend more time and energy doing this. It's draining when you're trying to work with people that you're not in alignment with. So now I work at American Atheists. <laughs> <laughs> I work at American Atheists. And I know for those who have stepped back, which was a significant number of people, or those who are less familiar or you know, there, there's all kinds of fronts that we work on as people who are interested in change. But I want to highlight some really exciting things about American Atheists. As an example, this isn't all just American Atheists. Some of it's about the volunteers, and they might work with different kinds of groups. But as an atheist, one of the atheistiest of atheist organizations, sorry, captioner, atheistiest, <laughs> the most atheist of atheist organizations out there, uh, <laughs> I'm also using it as an example. I'll highlight a couple of or other organizations that have seen some change, but I'm most familiar with American Atheists right now, so you're going to hear a lot about American Atheists for a moment. First, the, point, the overall point I want to make is that the atheist community has been evolving in interesting ways. And for those who have unplugged, you might not have seen it. I was actually going to include like, text messages that I, and some others I know, uh, swapped in 20, Actually, it was last summer. It's like, what is time? 
swapped last summer, um, one of the people who had dropped out of movement atheism in 2017 said, you know, maybe I'll write an article saying what's wrong with the atheist community. And I was like, you know, funny thing, I'm at American Atheists now, and almost none of our volunteers have, were volunteering in 2017. So what you talk about, if you're saying what is wrong with the atheist community, is not going to really be probably what, where they are. And they're kicking ass and busting their ass. Can I curse here? <laughs> they're kicking butt and busting their butts to, uh, to do a lot of work where they are. Some of them came in after there was a leadership change in American Atheists later in 20s. Like people are, people are doing amazing things. So if you do write that, put it in past tense because you haven't been in this. You were for a long time and then you weren't. And it looks different now. So one of the points I did want to get across here is that like, at least some facets out there in our broad, wide community doing all kinds of different things, like things look different than they used to. So, one is, I work in American Atheist now, uh, and if I were my uh, leadership team colleagues, this talk would have been about the threat of Christian nationalism all the different ways and what we can do about it and what American Atheist is doing about it. Also, you should join and be members. I'm really bad at talking about policy stuff, it turns out, because I haven't done that before. And the, the experience I bring to American Atheist is community, grassroots, activism, campaign development, some other stuff, but not like how bills work. Um, and my initial meeting, and I said that in my job interview too, like if you this, then like not me. but. Um, I remember an early leadership team meeting where Allison was talking about some ideas she had and an action alert that we could create to get people to respond to, I think it was on adoption and foster care, um, so the agency that does that, and uh, so that funding wouldn't go towards further religious discrimination, so they weren't adopting kids out to people of the wrong religion or atheists or lesbians or whatever, so funding wasn't going to agencies that could discriminate. And all these, like, I get that, but then she was talking about sending comments and administrative agencies and all this, and then she's, she asked me later, like, Debbie, you've been so quiet, why? And I was like, I'm sorry, I don't know what, what, the, what is an administrative agency, Allison? <laughs> like, so I was kind of Googling, but also, I don't have the knowledge to really contribute to this um, in a way that's helpful. Is that the same as testimony to do a comment? Like, I didn't, so I'm learning, which is cool. It's a, it's a growth opportunity. But I also know, and we, we have colleagues, I have colleagues like Sam McGuire here and others who I'm like, this person can talk about that. That's not where I, I know stuff. But it is a lot of what American Atheist does. So if you're excited about that too, check out the website. There's a lot of work going on there. And we've done some great webinars and town halls that um, you can look at to learn more about what we've been up to. But I want to highlight the staff. So in the last five years, American Atheist has gone from seven employees to 11. Started with a national field director, now Samantha McGuire up here, and she'll be tabling. <laughs> Mentioned Nick Fish got promoted up to president in 2018. I came on as programs director, our comms director 2018. Last year we hired a state policy director, we created a state policy director position to do more coordination with state policy and uh, volunteer coordination and a development director, so that'll help us be growing and doing this work and getting more funding to provide support to our volunteers and local groups sustainably. It's been pretty exciting, which is a, it's a good feeling. There are pros and cons to having a staff that have been around for a while or newer staff. One thing I wanna highlight with American Atheists is because a lot of us are newer, unlike at CFI where most staff had been there for 10 years plus, we're not so committed to doing things the same way we've done them because we haven't been doing them that same way forever. So if you have ideas for, you know, like maybe try this, not that, we're open to listening. It's not just like, oh, well, our conference has always been exactly this way. Our, uh, that's been always exactly this way. We're at the beginning of a strategic planning process. So there, things could look different quickly. And we want to make sure that we meet the moment that we're in. On a more personal side, I also do want to mention, we are a really queer bunch of people. <laughs> like, 
real clear. <laughs> I can't comment on the newest hire because she just started in June, our, our, state, our new state policy council. So of the other 10, seven of us are members of the LGBTQ community. Four of that seven are trans, gender non-conforming, three more transity trans trans. Um, <laughs> Of our three-person core leadership team, so not including the development director who's not a vice president, but and also newer, the three-person core leadership team is Nick, who's gay, Allison, who's trans, and myself, who's all the queers. So like, <laughs> it's <all> queer. <laughs> sorry, like, oh, that, yeah. That, yes, all, the, all of it, yep. So it's, and people bring experience from these other communities that we've worked in to the spaces. I'm not saying we're all right all the time because of these identities that we bring or these experiences, but like we're always looking to other organizations. We have gone to other conferences. We can speak from like different minor marginalized identity positions, personal experience too. And that's just some of the stuff. So <laughs> it does open up some really interesting opportunities for relationship building too when it comes to partner organizations and such. Culture wise, also I mentioned we look to these organizations and we're trying different things. Uh, some members of our board said that we didn't take enough vacation time recently. <laughs> and I was like, I hate taking vacation because then you come back to like a face full of email and it takes you three weeks to get out of the hole that was dug by taking you know, four days off. I hate that feeling. Sam disagrees. Sam's good at taking vacation. Some of us are not. So we decided something that we've seen from racial justice orgs and LGBTQ groups is like closing the office for a week. So your colleagues aren't bugging you to send emails so we're not all walking back into work that we've been creating for each other. And when we first saw this, like, it was probably a year ago, and we're like, oh, look. <laughs> Can they just do that? <laughs> Should we do that? And now we've seen it a few times. Um, the organization we partnered with for our convention and abortion access organization called um, ARC Southeast, they took a week off uh, right before our conference. Actually, it was a week of our conference. And gave a good explanation for it. And then we looked to other orgs. The National LGBTQ Task Force did too. So we are doing that. We're trying that. In April, or August, there's been a lot of stress with the cases we worked on. Of course, Supreme Court needing to pay attention. I'm just saying like the culture is different than what I've experienced before. I'm probably not going to achieve it. Say as a board member sitting there. Speaking of our board, <laughs> I'm going to unpack and I'm going to catch up on some stuff I want to catch up on. That's what I'm going to do. We have new board members and a new board chair this year. Jen Scott. <laughs> Jen Scott's been on the board since 2018 as treasurer. Um, the former board chair had been in his position for a while. He decided to step back in hopes that there'd be other new leadership. Jen Scott was an organizer through and through. She'd be here, except she's at the National Nuns Convention this weekend doing training workshops. She works for Equality Ohio, lives near Cincinnati. She is our new board chair this year. And the other three, Debbie Williams, uh, <laughs> former president of Humanists of Houston, now lives in a cell, joined the board last year. Madison Page and Amanda Keneath also did. Madison's been a democratic strategist and many, many other titles. Amanda was formerly the legal advocacy policy person at American Atheists. Um, wrote a book called The Citizen Ad Activist? Lobbyist. 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 Yes. Yeah. So our, our new, some new board leadership and board people, which has been like super exciting. These are the people who are encouraging us to take time off. So I mostly like them. No, <laughs> no, it's good. We're just we're just bad at that. Uh, <laughs> I also wanted to highlight though the way that the volunteer network works. So being involved in the Center for Inquiry and, and related groups, um, I'd heard the conversation a lot in this community that something is out of our mission, outside of our mission, something that we shouldn't work on. And I think as the atheist skeptic, skeptic blogosphere developed, there was a lot of conversation about that. There were coordinated, organized blogs that were very active, like Skeptic, and they would be like, you know, makeup claims and the ingredients in makeup. And there were some skeptics who were involved who were like, that has nothing to do with skepticism. 
because ghosts <laughs> and chupacabras, whatever. But it's like, or homeopathy, but it's like, you know, if, if these things say that they do this stuff and these are untrue claims, why isn't this something that we can apply skepticism to? So there were some differences of opinion, but even as an organization employee, as a staff member, there were things that I thought we should cover that others thought we shouldn't, and sometimes people would bring other perspectives in. So when I went to American Atheist, which has a smaller mission in some ways than Center for Inquiry, which is like all the science and reason and secularism and atheism and humanism, it says American Atheist, it seems like it would just be like atheism and stuff, right? <laughs> I have the wrong sign next. Oh, no, that's not right. I'll have to come back to it because apparently my, I accidentally, I accidentally my wrong slide set. Hold that thought. So our volunteers, <laughs> which mostly consists of state directors and assistant state directors like Devin Graham, who is in Tallahassee, Florida. And uh, where'd you go? Mike Reed in Maryland. And I'm probably missing some others. But they do a lot of coordination depending on where they are and what their skills are and how close they live to a capital. They can show up, they can give testimony, they can coordinate the groups locally. There's a lot of work that they can do. They participate on training calls, they share information. They're wicked cool. And when I started, I really thought that they would, <laughs> I thought there would be a lot more focus on like atheistic atheism. So I brought, I have some pictures from one of the groups that won an award last year. God bless you. Uh, which is, the Northern Indiana Atheists in South Bend, they're an atheist branded atheist group in a state like Indiana where they really could focus on church state separation, fighting Christianity, educating, and all these things. But they also do this. They also do this. They protest uh, around homelessness and unhoused issues. They educate their people about it. They build community partnerships around it. Some of their service work includes creating hand sanitizer that they, they distributed to unhoused people. Um, just very amazed. This is from uh, one of the articles on their website. I recommend, if you think this is interesting, which I do, take a look at their website, northernindianaatheists.com. See, they also do church state separation stuff. When there would be like prayer rallies and hospital parking lots at the beginning of the pandemic, they were like, no, <laughs> don't do that. You're going to end up with like more dead people because you're in close quarters caring for hospital staff. There are also school board issues and all kinds of stuff. I'm just showing you the other things that you would do that people might not know on the ground atheist labeled identified community groups do. Stuff like this. It's incredible. The rally signs, which I thought was next, pride parades, we have these cool rally signs. And in 2019, uh, like two months, three months after I started, I was like, we're about to have this convention. We're printing new merchandise. Hey, state director volunteers, what kinds of merchandise would you want to see? Are there any other messages that you'd want on the rally signs besides what we have? These two say, uh, when equality is under attack, atheists show up. Uh, one with rainbow, one with um, trans flag colors. And the answers, I got, oh, this is another classic one, thoughts and action instead of thoughts and prayers. I clipped some from the 2019 document because I was stunned. Yes, IGWT. Pride, of course, Planned Parenthood, IGWT, which is In God We Trust protests. I like the slogan about atheists showing up when human rights are at risk. School vouchers, LGBTQ quality, In God We Trust, capital punishment. It's like, what? You want atheists? Okay. It would be nice to have science for reproductive justice and immigration reform. I was like, you, what? That is for atheist group or organizing? <laughs> Women's rights, evolution, climate change, science literacy, abortion, Christian nationalism, Project Blitz, which is Christian national campaign, something anti-racist. And then actually we, this 
was a bigger and bigger request as time went on because of some of the close relationships between Christian nationalists and white supremacy, um, that there, were, there was a KKK rally in Dayton, Ohio that atheist groups showed up to protest and they were like, we don't have any signs. Like, do you have a good sign? Like, you know, when, when white supremacy is trying to march in your town, atheists show up? And I was like, not yet, guys, but uh, just freaking out. I'll just do it by hand this time. I can't, I'm amazed to see that this is something that organized atheism is doing on the ground in person, like people needing to show up and commit time to this. So that, that's, a, that's been cool. And the last of the changey things I'm gonna mention real fast is our uh, convention attendees. So we didn't have a convention from 2019 until April this year because of course of quarantine pandemic uh, starting in 2020. We always put a form up asking people for suggestions for convention speakers and topics. I shouldn't say always. <laughs> Since 2018, we put forms up asking people for suggestions. And one person that was suggested was this guy, Ricky Allen Brock from TikTok, Captain Deadpool 86. And we were all like, who? <laughs> what? What is he? What is this? What's he do? How many videos do we have to watch on TikTok to learn things about him? Can we just ask someone? Is he okay? <laughs> None of us are really on TikTok like that right now. So we did ask some people who were on TikTok more like, is this someone that we want to provide a platform to? I ended up having a call with him uh, because he had never been to a conference because he started on TikTok, which started being a bigger thing during the pandemic. And at the moment of the conference, had I think 460,000 likes and follows, whatever, on whatever they're called. Talkers. Talk follows on uh, TikToks, <laughs> ticks. <laughs> so I called him to make sure, like, you know, is it all right? Who are you? And uh, he pretty quickly showed a real commitment to. You know, I'm going to say this, and he's going to watch this video later, so I have to be cautious. He was very interested in making sure that there were diverse perspectives represented at the conference and that if we wanted someone other than him, that'd be fine, but he could actually get a lot of people to go. He said if we had space that he could help organize a panel of other TikTokers um, because they were planning to meet there. And he did. Originally, he was gonna be part of the panel to help organize it, but he's like, no, I'd rather drop my space and let someone else go up and speak. So we organized, and he's I want to make sure there's diversity. I want to make sure there are different perspectives. They also talked about uh, Discord chats they were having and the, the rules that they had. So we had this neat panel of TikTokers and a lot of people at our conference that had never been there before, um, many from TikTok. In fact, most of the attendees had never been to a convention before. Again, mind you, there hadn't been one in three years. And a lot of our regular attendees who skewed older chose not to attend because of the bigger risks from COVID and whatnot. So we had a bunch of new people. They were very, very excited. Within what, a minute of being on this panel and they said, why do we make atheist videos on TikTok? They said, because there's a lot of sexism, racism, transphobia, misogyny, and all these things. And a lot of it's being pushed by people with Christian perspectives. So we're there representing, but also making sure that part of what we're sharing is intersectional, that it's atheism and also uh, anti-transphobia, -tran anti anti-misogyny, anti-sexism, anti-racism. It's fascinating. So the attendance even at our conference, which again was mostly new people, it looked different. They're still making, if you watch their videos, a lot of them are very classic, classic atheist community videos about how God's wrong and hell doesn't make sense and things like that. But also, the community that they're building, the actions they're taking, taking it's, it looks different than it used to. The assumptions that they have, the culture that they're fostering, it's different. It's exciting. I'm excited. We were all very excited as we're running around at this conference, like, <laughs> we must be doing something right. This is what, like, what our agendas look like. It was really cool. So, and as I close here, Super glad to be here. Super glad to see what Skepticon has been able to build over the years. Like, kind of amazed because, yeah, you guys, when you started, I mean, they did it as a college student group. And uh, at some point, they graduated, I assume. And 
<laughs> Art. <laughs> yeah. And uh, at some point, um, you know, life can be hard when you're trying to get on your feet after college and at other points too. Amazing people came and then said, I love this, how can I volunteer? And they're stuck around and help make this happen. Even with all the challenges, with moving, with pandemic, like figuring it out to present a free conference in the middle of the Midwest every year. Like, and not to mention the troubles, um, lawsuits, other things that take a lot of energy, time, money, and uh, mental health points. Um, can really take a hit, and yet here, here we are. So it's terrible. So I hate to end without any action, action items. I like giving training talks, but here we are. So for those who stepped away, what can you do? I don't know what your local group looks like. It might not be the place that you want to put your energy if they're not taking the kinds of actions you want to take. There are ways to change that. You can make committees. They don't want to do activism, they want an activism committee. You can make another different group, get other people involved. Depending on what kinds of things you want to work on, you might just do work somewhere else. But we miss you. <laughs> if you have questions, and sometimes people do in exactly the ways that I was just describing, talk to Sam, talk to me. We can help, maybe guide you. And sometimes it's like, yeah, do the other thing. You need school board reform, gerrymandering is the thing to work on, like do that. When you do, if you can, bring your identities with you. A lot of times we don't see like atheists in these spaces and they don't think about secular communities as groups to potentially reach out to to work with. Those are the kinds of things that we can shift over time if we show up and represent. You can join us more directly at American Atheists or other organizations you like. Uh, there's new leadership, of course, at the American Humanist Association, and I believe Nadia Dutch and the new executive director is still planning, going to be here. Yeah. And I was like, oh, hey. <laughs> hey, masked person I recognize. Uh, hey, Nicole. Yeah, talk to the American Humanist Association. The things, exciting things are happening there as well. So I, I didn't talk about them because I don't work there and I don't know as much about what's going on there, but I know they have new leadership and exciting things are happening. We're also partnering with them more at American Atheists we're working on an international humanist conference that's going to happen in 2026. It hasn't been announced yet. So we've got a while. Just teaser. Is it what? Is it no. 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 Uh, we're working on it. Is it? The internet knows that. Oh. Shh. What? You can also volunteer with American Atheists as a state director, an assistant state director for regional work. Uh, or join one of our new state advocacy teams uh, to get involved in a small group to help coordinate what's going on in your state with our awesome staff. Talk to Sam McGuire. She'll be at the table. We're also always looking for other roles and skills. If you're like, hey, how about this? Yes, come talk to us. Share convention program ideas. I'm the lead conference coordinator. Our next conference is going to be next year in April in Phoenix. And uh, I have to put together some programming. Do you have ideas or kind of thing that you want to see at a conference like that? Let me know. One of the areas that I want to grow is uh, climate change and environmental justice. So regarding uh, some strategy and planning kinds of actions, I wanted to give a few like takeaways, pitches. Here are other ways you can get involved. You probably were more familiar with the the standard like volunteer with us, join a group, etc. Regarding strategy and planning though, sometimes what we need is some good brainstorming because we're not doing a thing yet and we know maybe we could be doing it but we don't have experience doing it and we need to sort of put some time and commitment into thinking about how to do it. I have a couple of these campaigns and things that we coordinated, we're interested in bringing some other people in on. So if you want to talk ideas, share ideas, make suggestions, it'll probably look like a Zoom call or a Zoom call, Google Hangouts call in a few weeks just to, to brainstorm and then maybe another follow up. There can be an email discussion and if we figure out a sort of campaign plan, project plan, program plan that has other volunteer roles, you could continue being involved in the future. The first one, climate change. <laughs> We're not doing this, y'all. <laughs> But a lot of, as you saw in the, the list of rally sign ideas and things, groups are showing up for things, but they're not really 
engaged, engaged. The American Humanist Association does have a Here for Climate campaign. Um, some of the action items on that are educational, like bring speakers into your group and, and learn what to do in the area. But this is gonna, this is really a thing. Some of our state directors are volunteering also with local groups that are taking action where they are. American Atheist is not tackling this in a coordinated way. And again, I'm there, so that's when I'm like, hey, we could maybe do this too. What would it look like if we did? What, what kinds of things should we do? So if you're interested in that, please bug me. We're early in the conference, so there's time. I'll write your name in this notebook. <laughs> I will follow up with you. I got a pen. You can either give me your idea or tell me, like, yes, I'll be part of that discussion call. And I will be real happy if some of you do. Or like, I do this, and here's what we could work on. We really just need to put together a plan for that. And it shouldn't be like you know, two of us sitting at our desk on a call. Like We really want outside perspectives and feedback on this. The other campaign that's something we could work on better is online outreach and organizing. There are these TikTokers. <laughs> we are, we're, I mean, we're talking now, but the things that American Atheist is doing is mostly like field organizing with people on the ground where they are. Of course, state advocacy means you have to like live in a state and maybe show up in person depending on the state you're in and how unfriendly they make it and inaccessible to be able to talk to your elected officials. This is what we're used to. We don't do what the YouTube atheists do. They have that covered, like the Matt Dillahunty types. We're not trying to replicate that argue about you know, how Christianity is false or something. That's covered out there. But like the TikTokers are not connected, besides attending our conference, they're not connected to the organizations. They're not connected to this kind of a movement. They're connected to the argue about religion part of the movement. And they're ripe, like, it's a ripe space for building some connections there, or even using, doing like information transfer. And we will be talking to them, but as an example of a group. There's also, you know, I've said this before, more people show up for a Matt Dillahunty Sunday night Atheist Experience live recording, sometimes, than we have on our email list at American Atheists. Why aren't they on our email list? <laughs> Probably because they don't care about what we do, and we want them to care. Are there ways we can get them to care so that when we send action alerts out, and we're like, tell your governor this, tell your elected official that, you know, let them know this is your position on this issue that's important and affects people in important ways, that they can take those actions? We'd love that. Are you on our email list? You should be on our email list too. But broadly speaking, how can we as an organization connect better with the atheist community that's out there that is not connected to organizations, all the organizations, so that we can take action more effectively, so that we have more power? And Russ, just, yeah, talk to us. We're here, I'm there. I have to wrap up, but feel free to contact me if I'm around. To Sam, talk to Devin, talk to Debbie Williams because she's on our board now. Talk to my feed. <laughs> we have a bunch of volunteers. We're always happy to hear from you. And if you say, like, what's a longer thing? Can I talk to you later? Yes, let's schedule Google Hangouts. We do that now, right? Schedule a phone call. We still, I'm still old enough to do that willingly <laughs> uh, to talk on the phone <laughs> sometimes. I want to highlight, like, there, there's a lot of opportunity for change, and there has been a lot of <laughs> change and evolution here. Skepticon changed over time. American Atheist looks really different now than it did, and it's still evolving. And like the people in this room that help shift this community. Like, if you haven't been plugged in, you have a lot of ability to shift it. Sometimes it's just bugging other people who are in well positioned, and we're here to bug. Um, I guess I'll close. Oh, shoot. I guess I'll close with a sweeping statement about coming home or family, family reunions. And say like, when I left CFI to work for American Atheists after <laughs> a lot of conflict, I was challenged by some things that were different than I expected. I could get into that more. But I'm working with an amazing group of people. And it's made me like, it's very comfortable. It's like, you know, it's, it's easier. It's much, much easier 
when it's like, oh, we're in alignment on this. Like our values are in line. We just have to like figure the details out to be able to move forward effectively. And coming to Skepticon year after year, I just felt like there was a feeling too of like coming home and seeing old old friends. And sometimes you know you don't see them but once a year. Oh. So thanks for putting this together, Lauren. Uh, thanks for everyone for being here and being a part of this, building this space. I'm looking forward to getting the chance to interact with you more um, over the weekend and beyond.